you guys are also older, girl. I appreciate you all so deeply. Um, my question is for Cameron. Um, I know it was a long time ago when Andrea died and left the show, but I was just wondering for you, what was it like replacing her? What did you have to, you know, what were your challenges? Because she was such a vital character when you came in. A lot of us were unfamiliar with you and kind of this foreign new character. We were, I was just wondering, like, how you chat, like, took on, the ch took on the challenge. Well, I never like to think of it as replacing another character because she was there and she made her mark and stays in that <laughs> beautiful, pristine place forever for the history of the Ghost Whisperer. I came on as a brand new character, and we didn't exactly know where I was going to go, but I was a, a non-believer, as you probably know, and I was so grateful to the producers and CBS and the network for allowing there to be a non-believer for a while, to be the voice of some other people who were always questioning this kind of subject matter. but. Through the, the years, it uh, just became increasingly more evident that something was going on, and she really, it was either, she was either going to lose her beloved friend, or she had to open up her mind. And so I thought that on so many levels, it was, you know, art imitating life, where we are so steadfast in our beliefs, even when the evidence is presented and the proof is right in front of you, and we can't change. And for me, that was really exciting, to take a person and also a, a real person, me, Cameron, who's very steadfast, and have to make the adjustments. It was uh, important for me, it was important for viewers, and for other cynics out there, I hope, they were, were able to hear it. But I, I never felt like I was replacing her. I felt like I was uh, you know, honoring what she brought to the show and hoping to add something of my own as we went forward. You know, having, having, I don't have a college degree. <laughs> having a, an amazing cast like we do, I mean, it, I mean, obviously, I'm just, just one quick second. <laughs> what they do, what they let us do is they can, these, these are actors who can do anything. And, and you know, the, the other thing about what we did last season and what we're doing this season is we're trying to make the stories more about these characters. Because we have these great, great actors, and the, and the more you guys watch, the more episodes you watch, and the, and the more you get to know them, the more you care about them. They're the characters we care about the most. So we made a concerted effort starting last season, and we will continue this season to tell more stories about these people. And I wanted to quickly say one thing about, about Cameron. What? What, what did I do? What is everyone laughing at? When I'm saying nice things about you. Um, no, it, I don't know if Love will remember this, but when I pitched her this, this season idea last season, we were, I don't remember, we were sitting in the van, and I was terrified because I knew this was a scary idea and people might hate it. But the thing that made you cry was what, was, what became episode eight, which was the, which the episode. Received with him in the basketball court. Yes, and, when, and Cameron did, and I hope you guys remember, and this was an episode directed beautifully by Ian. Um, and what for me, what was... Because I noticed in watching the first two seasons of episodes when I, before I started that the moment that always got me, besides the goodbye, there were two moments that always got me. I don't know if you guys share this at all. The other moment that always got me was when a loved one realizes and accepts that they're, this person that they lost is still with them, still here. It's that moment of acceptance that there's a ghost, that that person is here. You can, you can say there's something about that moment of believing. And I remembered how powerful that was every time I watched it episode after episode, and I thought, we've been saving up for I don't know how many years that moment for, for Cameron's character, for Delia. And I knew that if we saved it, you know, and if we played it that way, we would have, we just, it would just make the whole season worthwhile. And obviously she remains a skeptic. She's a person who tries very hard to believe. She's taken a giant step towards believing, but we, we keep her as a skeptic because we, you know that she, she represents in that way so many of us, really, because a lot of us want to believe, can't quite get there. Um, and believe she Believe the people that do believe, you know, that's a big thing for me is I, when my friends tell me about their experiences, I believe them 100%, you know? It's just that I hadn't had a personal experience yet. Delia hadn't had one, so it was hard for her to just accept it on face value. She was waiting for her own experience, which was realized uh, when she realized that Sam was Jim on the basketball court, because so, so she went show, there to meet him, and he was there instead. And, and this show, we've been really fortunate. I mean, you talk about cast. I mean, as, as somebody, 
I hadn't really thought about it until the question was just asked. I mean, obviously there was the character at the beginning, but you're looking at this panel now, and there's four actors on this panel right now, three of which have grown in the show as the show has come on. I mean, Cameron came on in season two, and then uh, Christoph came on shortly after that, and then we, uh, we brought Jamie in after that, and all that's happened is that the show has grown and grown, and we have to believe that part of the way that the show has grown was because of these actors. I, I'm a director and, and a producer, and I can tell you that somebody once said it wasn't me, somebody smarter than me said that when you have a script and a cast, you're 80% there. You can still screw it up on the other 20%, or make it that much better. But the fact that we've been able to grow with this cast, as the cast has grown and the scripts have grown, that's why we think that the show has grown. We've been very, very fortunate. I mean, we had the chance to bring Cameron in, who's you know, an, an Emmy-winning, Golden Globe-winning actress. We just went, wow. has a hit show of his own, and um, as long as that's the case, I, we can't quite work around that. He's you know? still on sabbatical. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's in a jungle somewhere, discovering something. Yeah. But his, his show, is uh, CBS's, uh, that show, Gary and Mary, yeah. it, it will be back on CBS next season, so right. it won't be on our show next season. Right. But we're thrilled to have Jamie come in and create, you know, with a new character, and help us with all of the, the uh, journey and uh, help Melinda understand you know, where she's going in the spirit world. And he's been amazing and funny, very funny and fun on the set, believe it or not. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Jamie, you rock. Thank you. You rock, Jamie. You rock. You totally rock, Jamie. You rock. Right, so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for bringing up the Jane Moore thing. <laughs> I just want to throw a little something down the table too to Kristoff, who's a fantastic actor and a big, big addition yeah. to this cast. Yay! Uh, you know, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. And, you know, a little aesthetically challenged, I guess. But uh, no, he's a, we're, we're really thrilled to have him. And, and we're going to try to give He's going to have much juicier stuff to do this year. He's five years older. He's going to college. And a sweet and he's studying already. what Melinda does. Right? Yeah, that's right. He's gonna he's gonna be studying in college um, the occult, and so he's really gonna be able to um, give a lot of great info to Melinda and help her out a lot in the season. So yeah. um, so so Ned's gonna Ned's gonna rock it this season. Yeah, Eli. Man. So rock. girls, you get lots of crystal. You rock crystal. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Eli and I get into the book a lot, so you get to see a lot of that. And we uh, he's one of my teachers. So. We're all there together. It's good. You want to ask me a question? Yes. I was uh, wondering if the underground city would be playing a more important role in the future. Uh, we'll we'll see it and we'll hear about it. We have a brand new mythology coming this season that, that concerns a uh, a location. I don't want to specify what it is because it kind of gives a few things away. But it's a it's a place that becomes very central to the characters' world because of things that have changed in the five years between last season and this season. Uh, new careers that people are building, and uh, that a lot of our mythology is going to have to do with that place. And you'll you'll figure out what it is by the end of the first episode. It's a good reason to watch. Um, but thank you. Hi. Hi. You're tall. <laughs> We've had all these tiny people. You're very tall. Hi. <laughs> you guys are great. My wife and I love you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure we all do. Uh, I have a question about Melinda's father. Are we going to see any more? Does he have any more to teach us? Uh, well, Melinda's father actually, um, well, both of, both of them. Was, I'm so confused on that. Um, <laughs> one crossed under and one crossed over. So I think they've crossed. I think we're I think, I think we're done with her dads. Oh, you guys are clapping about that. Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> Thank you, though. 